Um, don't miss the service tonight. Uh, come pray and bring somebody with you. I've got something real special on my heart. The, the service tonight may result in somebody being saved, maybe not tonight, but later on. That's how serious it is, what I'm going to preach tonight. So be here. Make sure you bring someone with you. All right, here in Acts chapter 2 this morning, I'm going to read you a little bit about the uh, church uh, today. And uh, we got some folks wanting to join the church, and I thought it's been on my mind all week, all week about preaching something about uh, church membership and why we have it and what it is and so forth and so on. And we look back here at the early church had just began officially here as Peter preached a tremendous sermon. 3,000 people got saved. And um, look at verse number 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. This is Acts chapter 2 verse 41. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. That's a revival. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. They went to church all the time, worshiped God, and so forth and so on. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. That's what happens when it's hot spiritually. And all that believed were together and had all things common. Verse 45, and sold their possessions and goods. You'll never hear the TV preachers get on that verse in Acts 2. It's always them other ones. And parted them to all men as every man had need. That's the verse used to start communism. Taken out of context, it starts communism. When you make people do it, it's wrong. When they do it of their own, that's real Christianity. Verse 46, and they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church, look at that, he added to the church daily such as should be saved. I want to preach this morning on this subject, why I am a member of of the church. Why I'm a member of the church. Not long after I was saved, they, they told us, all of us young people up there at Nebo, there's over a hundred of us got saved in that revival. They said, now you, you kids need to get baptized and join the church. I said, let's do it. What, does that, that help me? They said, well, it ain't going to make you no more saved, but it's just what you do in following the Lord after you're saved. Like baptism. Baptism don't save nobody. All you do, if you're not saved, when you get baptized, you just go down a dry center and come up a wet. It don't, it don't do you a bit of good. You might get the flu or something, but it ain't going to help you at all in, in your standing with God. Joining the church is the same thing. It's, it's not going to help you. And, and we all know, everybody out here, all these horror stories about so-and-so's a church member and he's mean as the devil. We all know all them stories. I've heard them all my life. And I know, I know that some of the crookedest people in town belong to a church. I get it. I know all that. I know these people belong to church. Uh, that's a crooked. They fell in a barrel of fish hooks. They wouldn't get stuck all the way down. The only way they could be more crooked to be a politician. And they, uh, they screw their socks on in the morning. Uh, they, they couldn't tell uh, the truth if their life depended on it. You know, that's what they say about the politicians. The only way you know when they're lying, <laughs> mouth moving. And... Uh, 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 I understand that. I understand that. I understand that church membership does not make you any more holy or any more spiritual or any more right with God. I understand that completely. Uh, I, I, some people may think that. I ask people, are you saved? Well, I'm a member of the Methodist church. That, that, that ain't what, that's, like saying, that's like saying, are you married? And you say, I'm a Presbyterian. You know, are you, there's something wrong with your, your brain, your ears, or something you got hard of hearing. It ain't got nothing to do with it. Uh, it, it being saved is completely different. I, I ran up on this uh, guy one time in my, years ago. He started up and he said, Hey, uh, Danny. I said, How you doing there, man? I know you. You remember me, don't you? I said, I don't think so. He's staggering around. He said, You saved me one time. I said, well, You look like one I saved. 
Uh, that, that's about as good as I can do. I said, if you let the Lord save you, he might, might help you out there a little bit. And so, so I know that, that uh, uh, being, being a church member don't necessarily. I, 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 one of them preachers went to the jail and preached, and he said, now, folks, this is Reverend so-and-so, and they said, we're all members of his church. <laughs> well, the guy's in jail, and, and a lot of them like that. But uh, to, on, on, a, on a serious note this morning, there is such a thing as being a part of a church. Now, let me explain something to you this morning. Anybody who's saved anywhere in the world, anytime, any place, is a part of the body of Christ. They are part of what they call the church. They will go up in the rapture. They are a part of his body, bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. You get saved out in the desert of Egypt and and never see a door of a church building and go to the very same heaven that all of us are going to. You understand that, right? That is, uh, some don't like the term universal church, but it's the church worldwide. Don't like that term either, but everybody who's saved is, is a part of the body of Christ. Then we have what we call local churches, which is what Shining Light Baptist Church is. A local church is a body of believers assembled for the purpose of preaching, praying, propagating the gospel, winning people to Christ, and growing Christians, growing in grace. That's the purpose of what we call a local church. Now, we, 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 we have a membership of a local church, like Shining Light Baptist Church. I don't get up here and harp on it and say a lot about it because... Uh, some people have the wrong impression. They think joining church makes you say it. No. But I've, I'm going to talk about today about being a member of a local church like Shining Light Baptist Church. Now, that means this. You can, uh, you can belong to a local church and not be saved. You cannot be saved and not be a part of the, the big church all over the world, a part of the body of Christ. Got that? So when you get saved, then... God's will for you, if at all possible, is to unite yourself with a body, local body of believers and assemble with them for the purpose of preaching and praying and singing and learning about the Lord and preaching the Bible and getting stuff done. That is God's purpose. Now, I am convinced head to toe that God ordained local churches and, and scattered them all over the world that people would have a place to meet together and honor him and worship him. Jesus died for the church. Jesus is coming back after the church. I am not talking about these walls. Uh, people say, oh, did you see that church up there on the hill? I understand what they mean. They mean a church building. But the church meets inside of a church building. The church is the people. You know, uh, here's the church, there's the steeple opened up, you know, that little thing. Uh, the church is the people, and it's the people that make up the church. Without the people here, this, they ain't no different. It's just sheetrock like it's in a bar or, or carpet like it's in a mall. No difference at all whatsoever. You got that? Now, I'm going to talk about why I'm a member. I got saved up there at Nebo Baptist Church. I got baptized a couple of weeks later, and then we all lined up. And I stood in front of the church that morning and the preacher called our names off and he said, Danny Castle, he wants to be a member of this church. I didn't have to be confirmed. I didn't have to go through a bunch of studies. I didn't have to learn so many steps in a program. Listen, brother, you're not, uh, you're not, you're not educated into the body of Christ. You're born into it. Uh, just like your own family. When, when my daughter's over there was born, uh, if they was five minutes old, there's just as much a part of the body as one had been at 10 years or one that had been at 50 years. Uh, a newborn babe in Christ is just as much a part of the body of Christ as somebody that's been saved 30, 40, 50 years. It, we're all in, it's like a family, like a family. So I want to say a few things about it. Read these off right quick. Number one, I want to say I... I'm, I want to be a member of the church, and why I am a member of the church is because I got acquainted with the founder. I got acquainted with the founder. Do you know who the founder of this church is? It ain't me. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He told them, Peter over there in Matthew 16, 13 and 20, he said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You don't have to worry about the church going out of business. They may burn the building, they may kill some people, but the church of Jesus Christ will never, ever go out of business. There'll be some serving him when he comes back. I got acquainted with the founder. That night I got saved at Nebo Baptist Church. I never wanted to join a church before then, ever, ever, ever. That was the last thing on my mind. I didn't even want to go to church. I didn't even, I didn't even like to go to church. And the night I got saved, I went home. You've heard my t- testimony. And I laid down and I thought, good night. I'm not going to hell now. This feels good. And I told my mom. She hugged my neck. I laid down, went to work the next morning, got fired on my job. Me and this guy, because he's selling marijuana. And and, I think that's why we got fired. They didn't know it. But the Lord didn't want me around that. I never touched it, never put one finger on it. I seen him with it, and that's all. And I got fired the next day, and I went to work. And I went back to church the next night, the next night, the next night, the next night. You know what made the difference? I got acquainted with the founder. I said, I know who started this thing. He's the one that came in my heart the other night in the revival. I got acquainted with the Lord. I don't just know about him. I know him. Uh, if, uh, if uh, let's say the governor uh, of North Carolina, I know about him, but I don't know him. Somebody walked in here this morning and said, Brother Danny, this is the government. I could meet him, then I would know him if we talked. Now, that's the way Jesus is. A lot of people go to church and read the Bible and know about Jesus, but don't know Jesus. There is a huge difference in knowing about him and knowing him. I'm glad this morning I can say I know him. And best of all, he knows me. I'm glad I got acquainted with a founder. Number two, number two, you know why I'm a member of the church? I needed a church home. I needed a church home. I've met people for 25, 35, 40 years uh, that, that, don't, that say church is no big deal. If you want to go, all right. If you don't, all right. It's you and the Lord. It's all that matters. Listen, I needed a church home. I was 18 years old. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I didn't know which way was up spiritually. I didn't know any scripture. I, I Listen, and they ain't no church perfect. This church has its faults. But I needed a church home, and you do too. If this one ain't good enough for you, go find you another one and quit using that for an excuse. I told a man one time, uh, I said, uh, are you going to church anywhere? He said, well, I went over there and I didn't like that one. And I went over there for a little while and I didn't like that one. And I went over there for a little while and I didn't like that one. And I saw him about a year later and I said, would you ever get you a church? He said, well, I went over there and never did. And I, got, I, I let it get to me. And uh, I, I, he, he found something wrong with every church he'd been to. And I said, look, buddy, if you ever find a perfect church, for heaven's sake, don't join it. It wouldn't be perfect no more when you got in there. Ain't that right? It's the truth, isn't it? Now, the truth is, there ain't no perfect churches. And if you just use that for an excuse, you're going to answer to God for that one these days. If you're so great and wonderful, why don't you join and make it better? Well, if, (laughs) If you found a perfect church, wouldn't you get awful lonely in there? You're the only sinner. You couldn't talk to nobody, nobody you could relate to in there, that's for sure. Lord, I'd feel awful and weird in a perfect church. There's uh, angels and, 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 and people with glorified bodies, me stuck in this. I'd feel terrible. Uh, uh, but I'm glad God fixed it so that we can have a church home. Amen. The only way you can have biblical offices is have a church home. There are two offices in a local church. There's pastor and deacon. There are two ordinances given by the Lord to give in a local church. You can't do that if you stay home. You can't say, well, I just worship God at home. I turn a little gospel music on and I walk through the house uh, and, and quote a little scripture while I'm waiting on the football game to start. And, uh, and your kids are running back and forth through the house. They're not being taught. There's no structure to that whatsoever. There's no order to that whatsoever. I'm telling you, brother, people need a church home. People need a church home. One way we know it is in the book of Revelation, John wrote to seven churches 
to the church at so-and-so, to the church at so-and-so, to the church at so-and-so. That's not a universal church. That's local churches that John wrote to and the Lord told him to do it. You know what that means? God Almighty approves of local churches in communities. Now you meet these people who say, I don't go to church all a bunch of hypocrites. They're the biggest hypocrite of anybody. Amen. Amen. Sure, there's hypocrites in church. So what? There's hypocrites at Walmart, and you still go there, don't you? You're the biggest hypocrite, what you are. Amen. Come on, man. Say amen, Brother Danny. Amen. That's right. One guy said, I ain't coming to church. There's too many hypocrites. And the preacher said, oh, come on, one more ain't going to hurt us. That's right, that's right. There's plenty of them here, and they want you, and there's plenty everywhere else you go to. You don't quit work because you you got hypocrites. You don't quit work because you uh, you got your feelings hurt. Uh, I needed a church home. I needed a church home. There's uh, the only way I could have discipline in my life. I needed a church home. Listen, I just got saved. I had a lot of rough edges around me. I needed some stuff worked on on me, buddy. I needed to go to church, and it helped me. I was 18. I sat down, and that preacher would get up there and take that Bible and do just what I'm doing today. Just bam, bam, bam. It'll work on you. It'll work on you, and it makes you want to do better. It makes you want to live right. I needed a church home, and so do you. You need a church home. I would have said, that's my church. That's my church right there. Number three, number three. I, I'm a member of the church because I had a love for the family. When I got saved, I immediately just fell in love with church people. They, I, I, I just thought, this is my crowd now. I fit in here. Someone was 80 years old, and I was 18. We had a lady up there in the church, um, um, two of them. One lady, Mrs. Holland, up there in the church in, in Nebo. She was like 90 years old. And she lived out there behind the Holland. They, some of them still live out there behind the, behind the, the church up there. And Miss Holland was about 90, and she'd walk to church every Sunday like this with her Bible like that. And I remember we thought, man, I just want to be around her. I want to listen to her talk. I want to see. There was another one who prayed all the time, Miss Edwards, and we'd just go over to her house. And she was, Lord, I, we thought she was 100, but she's probably about 40 or 50. But, when, you know, when you're 18, all you little smart aleck brats, they, they think that we grew up with dinosaurs and stuff. Uh, but your day's coming real soon. Uh, so don't get too sure of yourself. But anyway, Miss Edwards, she prayed all the time. She fasted all the time. She, and I remember we'd just go out her her, her house here was my, my friend, 17, 16, 15 years old. Boys sitting, listening to a 50-year-old woman just talk to us and read the Bible. Isn't that weird? You think getting saved don't change you? I had no use for anybody over 25 back then. I thought you was old if you was 30. Now I think I ain't, you ain't even grown. If you're 30, you don't grown to your 40, and some of you are way past that and ain't never grown up. Amen. I don't know. You're stunning, but I had a love for the family. Listen, people, I've been on vacation before or off traveling somewhere, and something happened. Maybe a flat tire, car breakdown years ago, and so now nowadays everybody's got so much communication, phone, and everything. You don't do stuff like it. But I remember. Uh, having a flat or breaking down, and you know what we'd do? We'd say, there's got to be a good church around here somewhere. Call them. And sure enough, somebody would come out and say, hey, you're, you're a Christian or not? And they'd help. That's our family. Our family's all over this world. I got my strong doubts about people that's always believing the worst about their family. I listen. Somebody comes up and says, "One of your girls, one of your girls, on it." There's something in me immediately jumps to their defense. You better not shut up talking about my daughter like you know. That's the way we all are, and I don't like that about my sister. I don't want to buy, and that's the way we are as Christians. At least we're supposed to be. Uh, I know people. I know people say, "Did you hear about so and so? What they did?" 
and instead of jumping through the fence, said, I knew it. I always thought he was a hypocrite. That ain't no way to do your family. Yeah, if it's your real family, you'd say, now, wait a minute, right? Wait a minute, right there. You don't know all the facts. You had not heard their side of the story. You jump to their defense. And that's the way a Christian, that's the way a church ought to do. You know, the devil can't hurt us from outside. The devil gets you turning on each other. That's how he gets in a church. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you this morning, I got a love for the family. Amen? Sure did. All right, number four, I got I to gotta say this right quick. You know why I'm a member of the church? Because the church helps me. The church helps me. I'm telling you, church helps me. How many times I couldn't tell you that I'd be wrestling with this decision or that decision or what am I going to do, what am I going to do, what am I going to do, and I'd be thinking all wrong. And I'd go to church and the Sunday school teacher would get up and teach it or the preacher would hit on it and the Lord and, and people would crowd around me and pray like some of you ladies were doing here a while ago. The church helps me. You need a church. I need the church. I'm a member of the church because, listen, when I, when I need help, my church people help me. When you're going through a hard time, somebody in the church will call. You need anything? That's a blessing. That's a big family we've got. Listen, don't, don't come to me and say, well, the church ain't this, the church. You want to make me mad? Start throwing off on the church. Listen, brother, the church ain't perfect, but the church on its worst day is 100 miles ahead of that world out there on their best day. Say amen right there. The church helps me. The church helps me with, with, with I remember a time or two when I'd be having a problem. One time, I had to go somewhere or something, and I travel a lot in the summer. And you know, your grass gets grown up, and I worry about my grass. My grass, my grass is going to be that high when I get home. And uh, Jeremy, somebody told him, one our deacon, he, him, I come home and my grass was mowed. Him and Michelle come over and mowed my grass because I had to be gone. I'm going to be gone a lot this year. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I really don't mind mowing my grass. I think man ought to mow his own grass. But, uh, uh, but listen. The, the church helps people like it. And the church helps you. So ain't nobody never helped me. Let me ask you one. How many people you helped? A man that has friends must show himself friendly. And you got a hint around like I did there a minute ago. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But I'm going to tell you something this morning, people. Listen, the church helps me. I'm not talking about just mowing your grass. That's a wonderful thing. I'm not talking about just saying, Here's you some money, help buy your kids something to eat. That's wonderful. Thank God for that. I, I'm not talking about just saying, pat on the back, boy, that's a good sermon. I'm talking about, buddy, when all hell breaks loose and you don't even know if you're going to make it or not, they'll be right there praying and helping you get through your problems. Right. That's right. The church helps me. Not just with help like that, but godly advice and wisdom. You can do some dumb stuff if you don't listen to the advice and wisdom of godly people in your church. Do you know why? Do you know why a lot of people will not ask for godly advice? Because they got their mind made up what they're going to do, and they don't want to hear what, the, what their brothers and sisters are going to say. You, that's a dangerous shape to get in. You know what you need to do? You need to say, find somebody more godly than you. I find somebody more godly than me, and say, what do you think about this? You say, I'm not going to ask them because I know what they're going to say. That ought to tell you something. If you're honest, that ought to tell you something. I say, I, what do you, and that don't mean they're right, and that don't mean you have to do what they say, but it sure does help to have some godly advice. My pastor, we went to him many times. I say, preacher, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? What do you think about us going to, to a college or, get, or buying a house or getting married? Listen, there's nothing wrong with asking for godly advice, buddy. And the church helps me. It helps me. It helps me when, when I need a job, they can pray for me to find a job. Or they know somebody can uh, find somebody that can meet somebody who will help you out. Listen, you get all kinds of benefits like that when you're a church member of a local church. Number five. Number five. Being a church member gives me the opportunity to serve people and the Lord that I would not have if I were not a church member. For example, all these people sitting at home this morning say they're living for the Lord. And they're sitting at home. They don't have the opportunity to serve like me and you do. They don't have the opportunity to do something like uh, one of the boys 
broke something on one of the uh, latches on the door back there this morning. Come loose. And uh, uh, they get in there and little, little darlings. And they, and they tie up them doors and lock the stall doors where you have somebody have to crawl in. You know how little darlings are. And, uh, and they start doing it every Sunday. And one of them broke a piece off of it. And I gave it to one of our men back there. And he, I said, see if you can fix this. He goes back there and fix it. You can't do that if you're sitting at home. You can't open the door for somebody like Brother Ed does back there and hand him that bullet if you're sitting at home. You can't pick up a piece of trash or, or help out with a sweetheart banquet or do it if you're sitting at home. The Lord, the church, gives me an opportunity to serve. Yes, sir. Beware of organizations that bypass the church. Beware of a church that won't even call itself a church. There's nothing wrong with the word Church, I didn't start this. I'm preaching it. Jesus died for the church. Jesus did not die for a worship center. Jesus did not die for a, he died for the church. He's coming back after the church. There's nothing wrong with showing the whole community, yes, we are a church. We are the body of Christ, and thank God for it. Don't be ashamed. Be you say, well, I, I just go to the worship center because it don't sound so churchy. I know what you need. A trip to the altar Amen. and ask God to forgive you for being ashamed of what Jesus died for. Amen. Like it, lump it. Amen. Amen. Jesus died for the church. And while I'm on it, I might as well say this. Jesus didn't die for a lodge. Jesus did not die for the Masonic Lodge. Jesus did not die for the elks and the moose, the goose, and the crawdads and the woodchucks and, 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 and all the rest of that. He did not die for that. You say, well, they do a lot of good things. I didn't say they didn't do some good thing. But I said, listen, when Jesus comes, he ain't coming after no lodge. When Jesus comes back, he ain't coming after no uh, the, the, the Kiwanis Club. He's not coming after. Some people say, well, uh, we do a lot of good. That's fine. I ain't knocking anything good anybody does. But I am saying this. You want to really serve God, get in a church and serve God. Get a church. I'm a member of the church because it gives me an opportunity to serve. Number six. I'm a member of the church because the church gives me the opportunity to invest in God's work for His glory. Now I invest three ways in the Shining Light Baptist Church. I invest with my time, I invest with my talent, and I invest with my tithes. Remember them three, my tithe, my time, my talent. I can invest in the work of God with those three things. Now, if you're not a member of the church, I, if, if you just... If you just go here and yonder and nowhere and every once in a while and here that I don't know how I don't how do you how do you pay your tithes or even do you? Surely you ain't stealing his money. You're stealing it and spending it on yourself. You crook. I mean he he gives you nine ninety cents out of every dollar and you steal that ten. Amen. Lord, the only people who get mad at that's people who don't do it. So I ain't worried about it. Gilly dog always bark. Uh, but I'm telling you, that, listen, brother, listen, I'm glad I get to invest. I invest my time. I come down here and do what I'm doing right now. This is my job. I invest my talent. I don't have a lot of it, but what I've got, I can invest. If you can talk, talk for the Lord. If you can sing, get up here and sing for the Lord. If God's give you a talent to sing, sing for Jesus Christ, brother. Don't waste it on this world. Listen, if, if, you, if you've got money, use your money for the glory of God. Don't waste it on a bunch of sinful stuff. Don't waste it on drugs and alcohol and, and junk like that. Invest it for the glory of God. Let me give you an example. If I wasn't a member of the church, I went to uh, this lady's house right back there behind you, brother Ed. That lady, that lady, I don't even know her name, with the red coat on right there. Her, she got six little girls, and she don't speak good English, so she, I think she knows I'm talking about her. It's good too. She got six little girls, like three up to about ten. 
We visited her yesterday. She's on Miss Sandy's route, and they visited her and got her started coming to church. If I wasn't a member of this church, I just said, well, I hope you all go to church tomorrow because I wouldn't have seen some other folks back there too. These folks back there on the back and, and went to other places. And if I wasn't a member of church, I'd just say, well, you all try to go to church some more tomorrow. But I invest my time. I invest my tithe. My tithe, it all goes together, and we buy a bus. Somebody else invests time and drives the bus. Somebody else invests time and works on the bus. Somebody else invests. You see, a church can get all them people here. And I don't know how many bus kids we had here this morning. We had about a, almost 100 last, last Sunday. But, uh, I, there's no way, if I didn't have a church, I could get 100 kids to church. Couldn't do it. But you see, see why a church is important? All together, we can get it done, brother. We can get it done. Had 160 of them up here the other Sunday. And all of us together, bought, we bought $3,000 worth of presents for them for Christmas. We give them pizza on the way home. It takes, that's the way you invest for the Lord. Without a church, you can't do that. What if every one of us just sat home this morning and read our Bible and, and had a little devotion? All them kids would be sitting at home going to hell and wouldn't be nobody trying to reach them. I'm a member of the church because it gave me a chance to invest. And by the way, I put my tithes in my church. I don't send my tithes to a preacher on TV. I don't do that. You say, well, I think they're feeding some hungry kids. I'm all for feeding hungry kids. But you know, you support your church, and then the church goes and feeds the hungry kids. And that's the way this thing works. And, and you want it plain? You don't eat at McDonald's and go over and pay at Hardee's. You pay where you get your food. I, I pay. Well, remember, listen. One lady, one lady said, well, I just like that preacher on TV, and I'm going to send him my money. I said, well, call him when you get in the hospital and see if he'll come see you. Call him when your kids get married or somebody dies and watch what happens. That's why we have local churches. We help each other. We invest our time, our time, and our talent. It gives me that opportunity. And then last, and I'm through. I'm through. It is the only institution, the church, organization, I should say, that his very own and that he's coming for one day. He died for the church. He's coming back for the church. He's not going to come back after a meeting house, although I understand what they mean when they say that. I ain't trying to be ugly. I'm just saying he died for the church. died for the church. They said one time this little girl got lost in this town and she got lost they could run the cops, somebody took her to the cops and she was sobbing, tears running down her face. They said, honey, what's wrong? She said, I don't know, I don't know how to get home, I'm lost. I don't know how to get home, I'm lost. And they said, well, honey, where you live? And she said, I don't know the name of it. I don't know the name of it. And they started talking to her and she said, oh yeah, I remember, you know that big church? That big church outside of town? They said, yes, we sure do. She said, if you can get me to that church, I can get home. And, and uh, well, I read that story and I about shouted. Says, if you can get me to that church, I can get home. And I'm glad and I'm thankful this morning that many, many years ago, an old preacher named Hall Hollifield in Nebo had an old preacher come and preach a revival. And they had the lights on. And I went to that church that night and I found my way home. Listen, people, that makes me love this church and any church that's preaching the Word of God enough to say it's the most important thing on earth. Amen. I'm going to make some of you mad now, but what I'm going to say is right. People say the home is the most important thing in the world. It ain't neither. The church is. Jesus didn't die for the home. He ain't coming back out of the home. I'm a 100% believer in good homes. I know our churches are made out of home. I, I know all that. I preach all that. But the most important thing on this planet is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I challenge you, show me that ain't right in the Bible. That's what he died for. He loved the church and gave himself for it. I don't think we take it serious enough sometimes. Be in your spot, in your church, with your tithe, your time, your talent. 
see it, the work done for God that he gives us to do. All right. Here's what we're going to do this morning. Just bow your head and let's have a little word of prayer. And Miss Desi's going to come. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this privilege coming to you in prayer this morning. Thank you for the church. Thank you, Lord, that many, many years ago I was born into it. And then a few weeks later I joined a local body. I pray that you would help us today. Help every person here find that local body they need to be a part of and get in it for the glory of God. Have you in our hearts. Do what ought to be done now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's stand this morning. For those that we have talked to, ones that we've talked to last week, just come up here and stand right quick. There's a bunch of people who want to join the church. And if, we've not, if you haven't talked to me about this, just wait. She's playing softly. Y'all come on up here stand right across the front here, Brother Steve. These were people come last week. They didn't know I was going to preach this this morning. I didn't either. Uh, but uh, just line up right across the front here. Amen. Amen. Uh, where are we at? Uh, Miss Kim, you back there somewhere? Oh, there you are. She's going to get your name. You can go ahead and start doing that since we got so many of them. You know, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Now, if you're here this morning and say, Brother Danny, I want to join the church. If you've been saved and baptized and right with God, come on, you can do it right now. If not, talk to me later and we'll do it. But uh, all these people have been saved and I think all of them but a couple have been baptized and, and they're willing to be we'll let you join the church if you're saved and willing to be baptized since we have one okay alright we'll start over here brother Jason appreciate brother Jason miss Chanel and all one two three four five of these youngins ain't that something JJ Jason Jr all of them our great singer right here, Sophia. What a singer they are. What a pianist he is. One of them, which one's a pianist? You wouldn't believe what a concert pianist he is. <laughs> Amen. You ain't heard him play yet because he don't know no gospel songs. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He's learned some classical stuff. It's neat. It really is. It's cool. Watch him play. Amen. Then Brother Steve Byrne, Miss Brother Steve and Miss Sue Ann. Hadn't they been a blessing to us here in the last few months? I'm thankful the Lord sent them here, uh, that we could be a blessed by them. And uh, Brother Steve runs a tax. Anybody need their taxes done? Man, fix you up right there. He did not tell me to say that. Probably got more than you want, ain't you? He was a, a school teacher. From, uh, y'all need some. He knows every crooked crook in a loophole in the book. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. But anyway, them, and this is Tish Wright. Tish is Roger's fiance. Y'all pray for her. She really needs prayer. Really, really bad. Uh, her and Rod just got engaged. And Tish moved all the way down here from Asheville and been coming. And I, that's her real name, Tish. Letitia. I knew there had to be something more to it. Uh, but I thank the Lord for her. And then Miss Cassandra here. Thank God for her, Miss Sandra Cook. She's been coming a year, two years, year and a half, whatever it's been. You're not happy. Amen. Where you got? Where's the rest of them cooks? They're back there. They are. There's a whole row of them back yonder. What a bunch there, buddy. That's a blessing. And then Brother David and Kalen. And uh, they've been coming off and on for years. We love Brother David uh, Blackwood, his family. And so what we'll do, we'll just take them all at one whack this morning, take them all in. Someone want to make the motion? Someone want a second? The motion been made. Eric, second by Jeff Worley. All in favor, let me know enough to lift your hand. Oh, got more coming here. I thought you was already a member. You are, ain't you? Oh, okay, okay. All right, let's go ahead. Cassandra, Brother Terry. Brother Terry got saved right here on the altar, and he was raised Jehovah Witness. How many of them you know? Anybody in it? You don't know many of them, do you? I talked to a boy sometime the other day. Was that one? Uh, a Jehovah Witness gets saved just like anybody else does getting your heart right with God, saved by the grace of God. Amen. So Brother Terry, Cassandra, and Luca. Amen. Someone make the motion? Second. All in favor, let me know an uplifted hand. Now here's what we're going to do since there's so many of them. That's 17, I think. Hey, there's you something to put on Nosebook. Here's what you do. Go home and put on Nosebook, everybody. 
did y'all hear what happened at Shining Light this morning? And everybody say, no, 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 what? They're just dying for it to be something bad. And say, 17 people join the church, and they'll say, well, isn't that wonderful? That's the truth. It's the truth. Something had happened to be all over the country before this season. People don't want nothing good to happen. Take a picture of that and put it on those books. Amen. Lord will bless you for it. All right. Now, here's what we're going to do. I want you all to stay up here. She's getting your name, your address, and I want everybody to come around and give them the right hand of fellowship. It's the way they did in the Bible. Paul said they give me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. And uh, they're officially members of Shining Light Baptist Church and welcome them into our church. If you want to join the church, let me know. You'll hear me go years and don't even ever say that. Uh, it's very rare for me to do it, but we had so many wanting to this morning. Uh, that's why I did what I did. Okay? Now, don't miss tonight. Come pray and bring somebody with you. And then next Sunday night is our big youth service. You kids, get all your friends. Bring everybody you can next Sunday night. And I'm going to be proving there's a God. Proof there's a God next Sunday night. All right? Let's bow our head and be dismissed.